Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Game Changer. I'm Maryam Zia. In today's program, we will explore the entire spectrum of relations between Pakistan and Malaysia. Pakistan and Malaysia share warm and cordial relations that are based on common religious ties as well as shared economic interests. When we look at the history, Pakistan and Malaysia established diplomatic relations back in 1957 and since then both countries have collaborated on different issues on international levels and in various fields as well. Uh, but when we look at Pakistan's trade volume with Malaysia that stands at $1.76 billion, uh, although Malaysia is one of the largest trading partners of, of Pakistan in Southeast Asia, but there is a lot of potential. So in today's program, we will be exploring the potential of enhancing and strengthening bilateral relations between Pakistan and Malaysia and how connectivity via CPAC could be uh, could be a game changer for both countries and for South and East Asian region as well. Uh, to discuss this and more, I'm joined in the studios by Dr. Fazlur Rahman, who is director, Pakistan in Institute of China Studies, Sargodha University. Uh, with him, I'm joined by Dr. F uh, Zafar Nawaz Jaspal, expert international affairs. And we're joined online by Mr. Humayu Khan, who is expert international affairs. And we are joined online by Dr. Uh, Hasnain Jawed, who is economist and expert international affairs. A very warm welcome to you all in the program. So, um, Dr. Fazlur Rahman, let me start with you. When we talk about Pakistan's relations with Malaysia. How do you see uh, the political relations between the two countries have evolved over the years and what are some of the key events uh, or some of the key issues that have shaped relations between the two countries? Actually, when uh, Malaysia got independence in 1957, it was a Cold War era and Pakistan already had become a member of CETO. Hmm. And Pakistan was playing a very important role in terms of the security of that region, uh, which was led by the United States of America and its allies. Uh, so Pakistan and Malaysia, we had a common experience of colonial rule. Uh, we have a common heritage of Islamic, uh, uh, you know, uh, history, culture, and religion. Mm, religion, of course. And uh, these all uh, factors basically bound us together. And we have been from the very beginning having very cordial relations with Malaysia. And we withheld recognition of uh, Singapore and Brunei till the time, you know, Malaysia recognized them. So that also shows a goodwill gesture from Pakistani side towards the Malaysian uh, concerns and regional policy. So f from that point of view, I think that from the very beginning, we have had cordial relations and which continue to develop with the passage of time. And we see that, you know, in the, uh, in the 60s and then in the 70s and 80s, uh, this relationship kept evolving under the umbrella of OIC at the United Nations Organization and other different forums, uh, which were uh, like, you know, sort of ASEAN, Pakistan has been engaged with the ASEAN also. So right, right. Uh, but uh, Dr. Jaspal, uh, I'm interested to know when we look at the history, uh, we know that Malaysia, uh, uh, when we look at Malaysia's collaboration in this region, uh, that was more towards India. So uh, how do you see that uh, relation with India have impacted the bilateral relations between Pakistan and Malaysia? I think that <coughs> we have to see that the Pakistan and Malaysia, India, bo uh, all the three countries were the British colonies hmm. and they are member of the Commonwealth. Commonwealth. And secondly, geographically, Malaysia was nearer to the India. And in this context, you see, though our rela uh, relations systematically evolved and today we have very cordial interdependent relations, but in the 1960s, the situation was not such as, though Pakistan maintained or uh, neutrality in Malaysia and Indonesia conflict from in 1960s, but Malaysia supported the India in 1965 in the UN, United Nations Security Council. Similarly, <coughs> Malaysia sided with India in 1962 against China. So in the 60s, one can see that despite being a member of the CETA or under the influence of the United States, Malaysia was more inclined towards India mm. and maybe it was the, if you see ethnically many in the mm. Malaysia, Singapore or in, in these regions, uh, Indian Muslims migrations and these kind of things. But however, after the 1970s onward and especially since 2003, when Pakistan started, uh, gave its uh, vision east or east vision policy, 
we have seen that uh, systematically Pakistan and Malaysia relations have been on a positive trajectory. Of and course. That ended like this way. Three days back, our there was a meeting in Kuala Lumpur by our additional secretary was participating in the round table. Mm. And number of the agreements they mm. have signed mm. and they expressed convergence over Islamic phobia, climate change and regional security. So it's correct to say that Malaysia was nearer to the India, but now it is more adopting policy. We have to not here uh, forget India is an enemy of Pakistan. Mm. We have a territorial dispute with India. But other neighboring countries, especially in the Southeast Asia, and India is a neighbor of them because of, of Andaman and Nicobar Island mm. and uh, these kind of the thing. So one cannot expect enmity between India and those countries. But of course, if we are of more course. attractive and they are more. Of attractive. course. But uh, what do you think? What impact does India and Malaysia relations uh, would have on uh, regional stability and its relations or its influence on its relations with Pakistan? I think that the Malaysia is now revisiting its relations mm. with the regional and global powers, though Malaysia is one of the most interdependent, it has a, its biggest trade partner is the US, but now it is increasing or it has been increasing its relations with China. Recently I have seen the number of the MOUs and agreements were signed with the China, though Malaysia earlier was expressing or was not, you can say, feeling comfortable with the rise of the China, but now they have established this kind of hmm. thing. Then we and have they have shown interest in yeah, CPAC as well. Yeah, and no, in this context, naturally if the Malaysia changes, uh, a strategic outlook in the context of Indo-Pacific, mm -hmm. then definitely if it is drifting towards the China, it has a, it has to distance from India or it has to adopt a neutrality in the India-China and India-US uh, or China-US relation. Because if we see that in, the, in this context, definitely Malaysia has. But I think that Pakistan and Malaysia relations cannot be looked with the prism of the or with the mm. Googles of the India because Malaysia, we look Malaysia as a connecting point with the Southeast Asian states mm, of course. and uh, to becoming a full partner of the ASEAN. And Malaysia also look Pakistan as a jumping pad or a linkages between the Central Asia and West Asia. Of course. Of That's course. why when the, in the 2019, uh, when Proton, uh, you can say uh, this uh, automobile assembly was inaugurated in Karachi, at that time the Malaysian uh, uh, head of the government, Mathir, he make a very interesting statement and he said that from here we will be going to export uh, this uh, my, my, uh, uh, proton uh, automobile parts and these kind of things to the mid uh, West Asia and Central Asia. So by this way we have to see that we have to come out of that that India could influence or I think now if you see there is another area Malaysia is cooperating with us in the military industrial of complex. Course, of course. So when the states come more nearer to the other states for a military or for a security purposes, mm. the third party cannot influence mm. their bilateral. Because they are more dependent on each other. Yeah. Uh, so Mr. Humayun, when we talk about Pakistan's relations with Malaysia, how do you see the diplomatic relations between the two countries uh, and the current state of uh, diplomatic relations between the two countries? Are there uh, some outstanding issues uh, that needs to be resolved? Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Mayim. I guess uh, I'll continue with what Dr. Jaspal and Dr. Fazal were saying. There's a there's a very positive trajectory of our relationship with uh, Malaysia. And nonetheless, what Dr. Jaspal earlier was mentioning about their uh, economic relationship with the India, that's a very natural. India is a huge economy uh, considering South Asia. Uh, they are a huge market as well. So there's a natural convergence in terms of like the, the balance of trade. Coming towards the Pakistani side, and I'll take what uh, Dr. Jaspal was mentioning, Malaysia has already supported Pakistan on all of the important issues. We have just described the issue of Islamophobia in which in United Nations they have supported us. Malaysia has supported Pakistan on FATF. Malaysia has also supported Pakistan on Kashmir. Uh, uh, in 2019 and 2020, if you remember when uh, Prime Minister Mahdi was there, uh, in the United Nations General Assembly, in his speech, he categorically uh, called out India Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Kashmir on citizen and amendment. Did uh, the relations with India as well? Uh, absolutely. Uh, you know, India, 
export around 9 million tons of palm oil, which is basically two thirds of its palm oil from okay. Indonesia and Malaysia. And after that particular incident, India put uh, curbs on the Malaysian import. They put 5% extra duty, but that did not deviate Malaysia from taking a principal stance. So in that way, it's a very, very good diplomatic relationship between the two countries. Malaysia has taken the Pakistani side on United Nations, particularly now in this uh, climate change conference, Malaysia was also supporting Pakistan very rigorously. So in that sense, I think this uh, diplomatic relationship is on a very right trajectory. Right. Uh, so, Dr. Hasan right. Javed, when we talk about uh, these relations, how do you see what are some of the key areas of cooperation uh, between the two countries and how have these areas of cooperation been facilitated uh, by the diplomatic, uh, you know, uh, ties or diplomatic channels? See, I mean, uh, in the next week, there is going to be an, uh, another uh, uh, round of the bilateral political consultation. But before that, the second round, if we talk about the second round, the second round of the Pakistan Malaysia bilateral political consultation, which we call it BPC, was held in Kuala Lumpur on March 28, in, uh, 2003. So the two sides reviewed the entire spectrum of Pakistan Malaysia relationship and renewed their commitment to further strengthen their bilateral strategic partnership. So Pakistan and Malaysia will enhance agreement and dialogue at all levels, revitalize uh, existing bilateral mechanism, and establish a new area of engagement. So uh, if I talk about the two countries, uh, uh, how they will increase the cooperation across the multiple domain. So very important one is the bilateral trade and investment. Then is a, a defense and security. Third is the agriculture and food security, energy, health, education, science. And most uh, of all is the Islamophobia, which I'll talk later in the part. Okay. So the parliamentary exchange and the people to people contact will encourage, including the hire, uh, uh, hiring of the additional Pakistani manpower to Malaysia. This is very much important part in the mm -hmm. economic terms. Second course, is that there is a convergence so of the views on the range Let's talk about of... the economic relations between the two countries. How do you see economic relations uh, have improved over the years? And as we are discussing uh, these bilateral talks that are going on, uh, how these would be impacting uh, positively uh, on the trade uh, relations between the two countries? See, the Pakistan exports to Malaysia, if I just see about the uh, export, it is about the 460 million, highest figure ever, it, it, but it was in 2021 and 22. So I don't know what, what, what's a bad uh, in decline uh, is, is in the current situation, but uh, well, it is about the 1,723 uh, million. If I talk about 2021, Pakistan exported 442 million to Malaysia, and then the main product of that Pakistan exported to Malaysia are the rice, which is about the 127 million. Onion is 56 million. Refined petroleum is 35 million, which is the highest. And we have to have the more engagements between the, uh, the in the petroleum way. So cereal, textile, clothing. Of course, we have to offer this uh, special economic zone under the BRI, which is about the CPAC. And we have to offer all the textile, seafood, uh, fresh, chilled, frozen, uh, and the chemical and the chemical products. There is a lot many things and we have to give the access to the certain area. And then is that during the last 26 years, the export of the Pakistan to Malaysia have increased at the annual, uh, annualized rate of 7.83 from 62.3 uh, million. So there is a, a little rate of uh, fluctuation, fluctuated rate. In 1995, it was uh, uh, 442 million in 2021. So after the 2021 trajectory, I can see the main product of Malaysian exported to Pakistan were palm oil, which is uh, five one, uh, uh, five, 518 million. Refined petroleum is 143 million. Uh, statute, uh, jo, uh, uh, SNL, uh, 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 mobile asset is about 45, M, uh, for 45 million. Electric and electronic products, this is very much major, a bigger market, a better market. If there is a problem, in, and, and I, I just wanted to talk about, there is a much problem in of the ASEAN, cars, and other issues, but there is a political uncertainty, which is by the U.S., because uh, in 2002-2003, uh, 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 China established the economic assistance to the ASEAN, which is, uh, and the Malaysia was the major part. And hmm. remember always that the economic, in the economic terms, Dr. Mahathir Mohammed was the one who asked, uh, who said that we have to revisit this uh, CPAC authority, which hurt 
the whole systematic approach, uh, approach of the PRI. So they have heard it a lot much because, because I don't know what was the philosophy behind that the Mahathir Muhammad was little against about the uh, Belt and Road Initiative. But yes, we cannot, uh, I mean, uh, fully, uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, not sure about that, but he, he ruled about uh, 22 years in, on uh, Malaysia. And right, he, right, uh, right. Of course, of course. <laughs> Of course. Uh, so, uh, Dr. Fazal, when we talk about uh, these, uh, the potential of uh, relations between the two countries, specifically when we uh, talk about the economic uh, relations, how do you see what are some of the key factors uh, in which uh, Malaysian uh, industries can invest in Pakistan and what would be its influence on Pakistan's economy? Well, uh, Malaysia is a technologically advanced country. Uh, if you remember in 1997, uh, eight Muslim countries uh, made a consortium and alliance of developing a D8. So Malaysia was member of that, Pakistan was member of that, and uh, some other important countries, Muslim countries were member of that. So under that, there had been a program, a plan for technological uh, cooperation uh, in science and technology and in joint manufacturing. Uh, so in that capacity, we have not really developed much uh, uh, to the effect that the potential existed. Uh, but now I think there are, you know, uh, new avenues of uh, Malaysian investment in Pakistan, especially with the uh, adoption of CPEC between China and Pakistan. There are special mm. economic zones and there are other mm. sectors which are opening up. For example, agriculture sector is another mm. sector. Uh, Malaysia is a net mm. importer of and, uh, and, 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 and what measures are being taken to attract more investment from uh, uh, Malaysia? Well, actually, uh, I think so far there had been, you know, uh, official level discussions. Uh, some MOUs have been signed on uh, collaboration in economic uh, affairs. Uh, but I think still there is a lot of, uh, you know, potential in terms of exploitation of the Malaysian market because we have been just exporting the traditional items to hmm. Malaysia. We have hmm. not entered into more innovative approach towards hmm. Malaysia. Hmm. And, and how to diversify these uh, items, we will be talking more about that, but we have to take We are talking about Pakistan's relations with Malaysia and how to strengthen these relations, specifically when we talk about economic relations between the two countries. So, Dr. Jaspal, like uh, uh, Dr. Fazal was earlier mentioning about, there is a lot of potential. Uh, what do you think? What steps should be taken to attract uh, more uh, investments in Pakistan and in which sectors? Uh, like we see that there is a lot of potential. I think that uh, Fazal rightly pointed out that one one of the most uh, you can sector which is very attractive for both states and in which we need more assistance that is a technological innovation and with this emerging uh, you can say global politics and especially in this uh, geoeconomic uh, arena you would find that technology is making a difference for example Malaysia is a big market of our Pakistani fruits like citrus or the agriculture products like rice or these mm. kind of things but if the emulations can assist that which kind of the things become more attractive for them. For example, in the case of rice, Basmati rice is attractive for Pakistanis or the South Asians, but not for the Malaysians or the Chinese mm. region or mm. that part of the world. Mm. So you have to learn from there what are their li likenesses. Second area is that in this context, Pakistani, Pakistan has been providing them a cheap labor. Many Pakistanis are going there and in that context mm. we can learn definitely Malaysia is an advanced state and it, it requires it you can say technically trained our people so we can have a here vocational training which was and then send our people there similarly as earlier it was pointed out by Fazal and also by my other two colleagues in this context uh, Pakistan is becoming a big attraction for a third party interest uh, investment in the uh, CPAC uh, especially the economic zones and these uh, Malaysian state will be more likely to be interested in the economic zone of the Gwadar or mm, in that mm. nearby because it's itself has and then this kind of a thing marine industry or uh, uh, aqua or these kind of things will be attractive for them uh, similarly uh, Malaysians are interested to establish their own homegrown uh, you can say middle or uh, medium range uh, sort of a military industry and in this context mm. they are purchasing certain anti-tanks or these kind of things Pakistan can assist them so mutual 
understanding and mutual cooperation is the uh, you can say mean to cooperate and there are many areas in that which if we can explore i can take a point which was earlier pointed out or further said that uh, you can say exploiting the Malaysian market. Hmm. We hmm. have a lot of potential and we can exploit the Malaysian market. Right. There is a lot of potential. So, Mr. Humayu, when we talk about the potential, how do you think the respective governments of uh, Malaysia and Pakistan uh, should be collaborating or are collaborating and what are some of the major MOUs between the two uh, countries to strengthen these uh, economic relations? Uh, thank you, Marine. Yes, uh, I guess there has been a very consistent effort in terms of uh, signing agreements and discussion and uh, signing MOUs. We have signed a free trade agreement in 2007. And then uh, later on 2007, we also signed Pakistan-Malaysia free trade agreement called um, Pakistan-Malaysia Closer Economic Partnership in 2008, perhaps. Uh, <coughs> with that, and on, 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 on a regular basis, meetings are happening. Uh, Dr. Hasnan was mentioning about the the uh, bilateral political consultation, which has just happened. Then uh, the next month, there's another meeting happening. Uh, but what uh, Dr. Fazal was saying that we are a bit slow to exploit the potentials uh, which exist between the two countries. You know, uh, they, there are many fields in which Pakistani uh, and Malaysian companies can uh, do joint ventures, particularly in livestock and dairy. Pakistan is a huge agrarian economy. Then food processing. Right now, we are like a growing uh, population of 230 million plus. Uh, then energy is a sector where Pakistan is in much need of uh, not only resources, but expertise as well. Uh, halal food products is something which is a big market. If Pakistan and uh, Malaysia can join hand together, we can export into uh, uh, a huge international market where there is a, there is a need for that. Then light engineering, this is Dr. Fazal was mentioning, uh, we have a, a very large uh, skilled and unskilled labor. So I guess that is also another field where Malaysia and Pakistan can join hand together and we can uh, do the skill of our labor as well. Uh, they right. are so, obviously... Right, yeah, please, sure, please complete your thought. And, 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 and that's what's like, um, there are some challenges as well. There are logistical impediments, there's lack of direct flights between the two countries. There is insufficient business-to-business uh, -business model which has not existed uh, in, in, in an effective way. Uh, then I think what we can do is in terms of tourism, and in terms of pharmaceutical industry, in terms of cooperation in other fields, there's a potential which could be exploited in the next couple of years and Pakistan and Malaysia could both benefit. Right, right. So, Dr. Fazal, when we talk about these bilateral relations, uh, how do you see the strategic partnership between the two countries and uh, how can we strengthen that area as well? Well, actually, I would like to make a little comment on the previous sure, discussion. Sure. Actually, uh, we have not really tapped the potential of services sector. Uh, under our FTA with Malaysia. Uh, we have not done much on that sector. And the, there is a huge potential as far as the services sector is, provide, uh, is concerned. Uh, so I think we need to uh, explore the avenues and we need to adopt a very proactive and aggressive uh, marketing policy for uh, uh, marketing our services and uh, as well as our products. Hmm. Coming to your uh, second uh, question about uh, the strategic partnership, I think that uh, Pakistan and Malaysia uh, have now a consensus uh, in terms of uh, security, stability, uh, especially in the Asia-Pacific region. And Pakistan being uh, uh, a close associate uh, of ASEAN and of uh, China and other Southeast Asian countries. So we have a natural interest in the stability of that region. Uh, we see now there is a, there are like you know uh, uh, historically uh, going on some disputes between Malaysia and some other countries. Hmm. Uh, so I, those have the potential of uh, you know uh, and sparking into kind of a, 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 a major conflict. But now I think with the Chinese approach for creating a shared vision and mm. shared future for humanity. I think all the countries which are member of the BRI are now uh, railing around the Chinese uh, concept of uh, a common destination for hu humanity. So I think under that there is a strategic consensus developing. And besides that, Pakistan has also defense cooperation, defense relations uh, with Malaysia. We have uh, recently held joint 
naval exercises. Hmm. Before that, we have been uh, exporting some uh, military yeah, hardware e to Malaysia. Equipments as well, uh, of course. And uh, there is a potential, there is a discussion going on for the, you know, sale of uh, GF-17 Thunder uh, with Malaysia. And I hope that, you know, because it's a very good aircraft and uh, I hope that, you know, uh, this, this deal will materialize of eventually. Of course, of course, of course. So, Dr. Uh, Dr. Jaspal, when we talk about these uh, st strategic partnership between the two countries, how do you see uh, both countries are collaborating or should collaborate for regional peace and stability and uh, to take other countries, neighboring countries on board for this I purpose? I think that uh, we have a different areas where we have a convergence of interest. For regional and global peace, for example, one of the most important area in this context is Islamic phobia. And we have been cooperating and collaborating with this. And in this context, of course, if we are able to manage together this Islamic phobia, it will be a good variety. Then we have within this, we have a, we are a member of the OIC and there we can work together. Within the region, of course, uh, Malaysia is in the Southeast Asia and it has a different take. And it's a, it's a strategic issues are uh, with that. But of course, if we can look this Indo-Pacific strategy of the United States or the Indians, then uh, Malaysia and Pakistan as a peripheral states of that Indo-Pacific strategy become more, you can say, they can play their role. Uh, in this context, of course, there is another important thing is that this entire region, including Pakistan and the Malaysia or these point of, uh, we have a big industry which we call it tourism industry and mm. it is very much uh, thriving in Malaysia and Pakistan can learn from the Malaysian best experiences how we can develop our tourist industry because we have a big tourist industry in this context that we have a Buddhist heritage, we have a Hindu of heritage, course. we have a Islamic heritage and we have a other deserts and the high hills and snowy peaks. So we, in that context we can learn from there and especially on the uh, tourist industry which is very much linked with the beaches. Of course, there's a, there's a lot of potential for people, so people there are a lot of potential. as well but like you earlier mentioned about uh, Islamophobia. Uh, so. Uh, what are some of the major uh, regional organizations that both countries are part of or uh, global or international um, uh, organizations that both countries are part of and what issues should they be raising? Like Dr. Stan earlier mentioned as well that there are some key issues that both countries have agreed upon and there is a consensus that these issues uh, both countries can collaborate on. How do you see no, what no, steps no, should uh, be taken? I, I, I concur the Stan's point of view because uh, on 28th March 2023, there was a at the additional secretary level meeting of at course. Kuala Lumpur and all these kind of the security, mutual security, mutual uh, food security, mutual uh, you can say climate change. Uh, there are a number of these kind of the things tra increasing mm. the trade. These agreements have been signed and endorsed. Now uh, the issue here is that we have to also keep in mind that Malaysia is from the Southeast Asia. Of course. And we are part of South Asia uh, drifting towards the West Asia or Central mm. Asia. So we have no geographical linkages we are far apart but then we have a, a religious cultural linkages but at the same time ethnic cultural linkages are not so we must be very realistic in this context they have their more focus is in the ASEAN and our more focus is OIC or uh, you can say but at the same time we can play a bridge grip as we are expecting from the Malaysians mm. that they could uh, they assist they could us provide a pivot uh, point no, for they, they assist mm. us in becoming a for a, di a full dialogue partner of the ASEAN where the Malaysia is assisting us. So in that context, of course, we can play a role in uh, bridging more because there were some irritants between the Malaysians and the Chinese, but now they are overcoming it uh, positive. We can play a constructive role in this case of thing. And in a way, we can try to benefit from it, Malaysians attraction in it. So there are uh, areas where we can converge. But there are the areas we can just not expect from each other because mm. we are a partner of a different regional construct. Of course. And if you try to approach the, if the regional uh, complex theories, then your regions have their own uh, regions have their own dynamics. So states have to work within the regional dynamics instead of just jumping out of the region and moving that. So, but still there is a lot of potential right, between right. Malaysia and Right, There is a lot of potential. So, Dr. Hastan, uh, how can Pakistan and Malaysia work together to promote uh, interfaith dialogue and uh, to fight against uh, Islamophobia? For the Islamophobia, Pakistan and the Malaysia was the, uh, I mean, uh, one of the powerful uh, voice in the whole world. And uh, uh, remember in the last week, uh, I mean, in 2022, the, the Premier of Pakistan called up the uh, Dr. Mahathir Muhammad and jointly they, they have released the 
uh, press conference against the Islamophobia. And we cannot tolerate the Islamophobia in the whole world. We have given the message to the whole world that the Prophet Muhammad, uh, peace be upon him, and uh, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we cannot compromise our, uh, 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 our integrity, our uh, uh, our soul or our spirituality to anyone. So this is a very important part and they have the only Malaysia and the Pakistan is the m more bigger part in this way. So otherwise, if I talk about the OIC, OIC have no economic assistance has been given so far. We are, we are, we have no, uh, I mean, strong, strong voice from OIC. So in, in association with ASEAN and CARS, we have to be the part of the ASEAN, but in 2002, it was the, it was headed by the China, but now it is headed by United States of America. So why not we are the part of the ASEAN and then we will have to have the uh, more experiential part in Islamophobia. And that is a bigger challenge uh, for everyone. So uh, we have to work um, uh, along with the Malaysia. Malaysia is the biggest Islamic power. They are practicing Muslim even better than the Pakistan. Uh, believe in me, they are into the peace, harmony, uh, they, they interfaith dialogue, and they are the believers of the uh, interfaith uh, harmony. And uh, 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 as one of our participants talking about the uh, 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 the logistics side or the Pakistan naval exercise, we have the wonderful defense ties. And how can it is about the South Asian part? This is a different part now. We we are we are collaborating in the defense part. Where is the 21st March? The Pakistan Navy ship PNP Nisar and PNP SAF arrived in the Malaysian port of the Langkawi to participate. Is the first bilateral naval exercise, uh, Malpak exercise, which was carried out in the state of Malacca. Then is uh, in, in 70, uh, February 17 in 2009. Royal Malaysian Navy ship uh, KD Kasturi and KD uh, uh, Maha, Mahavaksa arrived in Karachi to participate in the bilateral Malpak uh, 2 exercise. And the Pakistan uh, Navy ship PNS uh, SAF and PNS Azmat, long range uh, maritime uh, aircraft and helicopter participate in the Malacca exercise. And then his military procurement is uh, from 2022. Seven Pakistani made weapons such as uh, uh, Anza and uh, 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 Bakhtar. Bakhtar Shikan has been acquired by the Malaysian military as a part of the armed deal with the Pakistan. And then in 2018, the further reported that the Pakistan and Malaysia were in the primary discussion about the potential export of uh, Pakistan aeronautical complex. F right. So there is a lot of cooperation the, going on between the two countries. Uh, of course, it is not about the region and it is not about the block specifically. We are in the block with the Bangladesh and India. Do we have the good relationship with India? Do we have the good relationship with Israel? Of course, we can, we don't have. So why not with the Malaysian? Why we are focusing about the block politics? We should out of the block politics. And as I am telling you, we have the defense ties, we have the economic ties, and we are the powerful voice on the Islamophobia. So please. Uh, we cannot say we can divide onto the block politics. Uh, and this is of the course. other part of the South Asia. I, of course, I both countries disagree. are collaborating on these issues. Mr. Humayun, when we talk about uh, Islamophobia, how do you see Pakistan and Malaysia uh, are balancing or should be balancing their a need for economic development uh, in this climate of Islamophobia and the need for interfaith uh, dialogue? I think these are two very important and complex questions in a way that, yes, Pakistan and Malaysia are collaborating in terms of raising uh, voices against Islamophobia. Pakistan was basically a lead country in the world. Uh, and due to the efforts of Pakistan and other Muslim brother countries, we were able to convince the United Nations and a day was marked for this particular day. That was the beginning of <laughs> recognition that Islamophobia is a reality and political Islam is being used <coughs> against the Muslims. Having said that, in terms of economic cooperation, I guess uh, there's a couple of things which, in, in my opinion, we could learn <coughs> from the Malaysian uh, examples or Malaysian expertise. Uh, if you see Pakistan being an agriculture country and we import most of our palm oil, most of our edible oil, most of our oil seed, soybean, lentils, so this is something which is very dangerous. Uh, what we need to learn from Malaysia is how to increase our import, how to increase our export of these things, how to uh, bring quality seed. You know, sometimes when we are doing this, for example, in terms of edible oil, we can only produce 30% of our edible oil and 70% we need to import. So goes with uh, palm oil, we imp uh, import more and export way less. 
So if we learn from the expertise from uh, Malaysia and other countries, and particularly now, Dr. Fazal was mentioning about the second phase of China-Pakistan economic corridor, and we have agriculture cooperation with China. This research and development is very important. We need to have uh, these uh, climate-prone seeds. We need to have seeds which uh, yield more uh, output. Uh, what we are doing is old methods of 30 or 40 years of uh, flood irrigation and things which have not been uh, done in a very effective way. So learning from the Malaysian example, we could increase the import of these things and decrease the uh, chances or, or increase the export and decrease the import of these things. And we can benefit a lot from Malaysian expertise. Right, we can benefit and there's a lot to learn uh, from socio-economic development of Malaysia uh, for Pakistan. But we have, we will be talking more about it, but we will take a short break. Welcome back. We are talking about ways and means of strengthening relations between Pakistan and Malaysia. Uh, Dr. Fazal, uh, when we talk about uh, Pakistan's relations with Malaysia, how do you see uh, what should be or what is Malaysia's interest in uh, China-Pakistan economic corridor and in terms of also in terms of its broader economic uh, objectives in the region? Well, as far as the economic interest is concerned, I think Malaysia is gradually moving towards knowledge-based industry. And some of their traditional industries, especially in electronics and uh, in automobile, uh, they would like to relocate it. I think Pakistan can also take uh, benefit from uh, that kind of a situation where the labor intensive uh, industry is being relocated uh, in, in other developing countries. Uh, that is one area. And especially in the context of CPEC, I think that uh, we should in, in incentivize uh, the investors uh, to invest in CPEC special economic zones so that we can broaden our industrial base. Uh, for the moment, I think we need huge uh, boost into our industrial sector so that we can uh, produce surplus exportable. And until, un, uh, until we can do, uh, we cannot do that, I think that our exports cannot really, uh, you know, sort of grow. So we need to have a concerted policy in which we can invite Malaysian investment into mm. certain section of their specialty, their expertise, their advantage, and use them, use their investment in Pakistan. They are very good in terms of uh, construction. They are very good in terms of road building. They are good in terms of engineering goods. I think we need to expand our industrial base with the help of Malaysia. Right, investment. we need to expand that. But uh, Dr. Jaspal, when we talk about these investment, how do you see what are some of the potential risks as well as opportunities for Malaysian investments, uh, specifically in Gawadar port, and what needs to be done to enhance the opportunities and reduce the risks? I think that <coughs> if we, we are looking, we must be more realistic. As I pointed out earlier, that the regions have their own dynamics. If the Malaysia is jumping out of its own region and investing in the South Asian region, naturally it has to, uh, you can cement its fences or enhance its cooperation with the Chinese. Because in the Pakistan, the attractive projects are the Chinese owned or they are uh, bilaterally owned by Pakistan and China like Gwadar. Uh, and it naturally, if they have a better relations in the South East Asia with the Chinese, if they are cooperating with the Chinese corridor there, and definitely they will be attractive here as well. Otherwise, it will be a challenge for the Malaysians mm. as well as mm. for Pakistanis because we, we have to pacify or make them Malaysian attractive for the Chinese. Uh, China, Pakistan and China's economic zone, this is one region area. Second is <coughs> that we, we have to also keep in mind Malaysian society is entirely different. It's a multicultural society, multi-ethnic society. There is a lot of peace in here. But uh, and naturally their interpretation of the Islam or the other things is according to their own societal reality. But mm -hmm. here when they come, we have a different kind of a thing, more orthodoxy and biggest challenge is this uh, security challenge, which we call it. Uh, we have to not to shy to admit that Pakistan is now, uh, Pakistan, uh, the terrorism in Pakistan is, you can say, undermining the investment or uh, sh making the investors shy to come to Pakistan. So we have to come out of this. This is a big challenge for investors as mm. well as for our government. Uh, so we can say domestic and finally I can say that the Pakistan's own 
uh, political polarization. Mm. If you see, the Mahathir was very much here. He received the Nishane Pakistan. He participated in the uh, <coughs> Pakistan's uh, parade on 23rd March. He uh, visited the JF Thunder. Mm. And after that, of course, there was a change, and here was is a change. Mm. <coughs> but our political stability is the key. So, to track Dr. Jiswal, uh, this is very interesting because we see that Pakistan and Malaysia's relations have always been dominated by these domestic as well as external factors. How do you see? Uh, how can we address these issues to strengthen I mean, these? We, uh, uh, we have uh, to be despite very the uh, situation uh, that's going on globally or domestically in their own region. Uh, what countries? is the uh, you can say basic understanding of the foreign relation that if you you're from to your foreign relations shrine or you can say their base is your domestic situation. If your domestic situation is, uh, you can say, stable, mm. you are, uh, your foreign policy is stable and it's more productive. If your domestic situation is uh, instable, uh, then of course your political, your mm. economy is instable and your foreign policy is Spilled also effect, without course. any having an impact. So this is very important that we have to bring because if you see that in the Malaysia, in 1997, they faced a big crisis, economic crisis, and that they came out of it. Pakistan is facing a similar kind of crisis today. We can learn from how we can come out of it, how we can converge within the political forces and move ahead. Second is that in this context, we have seen that in the Malaysia, there is a parliamentary system, and in that parliamentary system, they are doing well. Why our parliament system is facing a you, some kind of hiccups or obstacles, we can come over. But of course, without having a domestic stability, if we wish that the foreigners will come, or even including the Malaysians or the Muslim countries or other countries will invest in Pakistan, I think it's a wishful thinking. Of course. Uh, so, Dr. Hassan, when we talk about uh, these opportunities, how do you see what are uh, the potential implications of Malaysia's interest in uh, Pakistan's uh, different projects, initiatives, specifically when we talk about in the context of uh, CPAC for other uh, countries in the region? and how to address these implications. Uh, mentioned you earlier and in so many programs I have told that we have the nine economic zones and of course the Gavadar. So the joint venture between the two countries in the field, in, uh, we can specifically work on livestock and dairy. Then is a food processing. We have uh, uh, Dhabaji and Russia is specifically for this purpose. And then is the energy, chemical, halal food. And uh, uh, Mr. Hamayu uh, specifically said that it is a main challenge. We have to collaborate on the halal food so that we can. Uh, we will become the most effective strategic partner on the halal food. Uh, then it's a light engineering. Uh, 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 let's try to understand when we talk about the Isla uh, Islamization and then there is a no uh, uh, boundaries and no countries thing. So in a halal food, we can only work together with the Malaysian and other Arab countries. But this is very much important that they have the uh, the biggest uh, 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 the uh, biggest organization for the halal food certification. So we have to work hard for uh, in collaboration with Malaysia. Then is a trade challenge is there is a log uh, logistical uh, embedments, lack of direct flights. Of course, uh, I, I have just heard that uh, PIE started 11. Uh, a direct flights to the different countries, uh, including I think Malaysia. So it would be the better part. Otherwise, we go to uh, Bangkok and then to Malaysia, and th that would be the, uh, the uh, I mean little uh, fish part. Then is the lack uh, the insufficient B two B activities. We have to promote the B two B business to business uh, environment, and our business, our trade, our uh, trade unions must visit to uh, Malaysia and work on the import and export balance. Uh, it was very good. I mean, I just wanted to mention uh, 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 Malaysia-Pakistan closer economic partnership, which, were, which we uh, call it MPCEPA, which was in the November 8, 2017, but uh, that uh, trade liberalization was really started. And then is the Pakistan and Malaysia have agreed to activate their bilateral relations into the strategic partnership. It's make a new level of bilateral cooperation between the both countries in the various fields. Now, here I just wanted to do a very important thing that uh, our uh, staff level agreement, uh, our staff level agreement right there, but uh, that is going to happen. They have not mentioned the spec. They are not giving the roadmap for the CPAC. They are just talking about the political, the military cooperation, trade and investment ties, and 
uh, cooperation in the science and technology, health and tourism culture. And then there is a missing element of the CPAC. There is no economic zone, there is no economic zone trade agreement. There is no, and, uh, and, and I would request uh, Bilawal Bhutto Zardari, our foreign minister, to pay a visit to the Malaysia so that we can have a good development in the development in the uh, Asia Pacific region. Then is the climate change is very much important and we must have to uh, work harder. But further, Mr. Humayun, uh, how can Pakistan and Malaysia collaborate to address common challenges like when we talk about climate change, food security and such issues? I think there is a, a unanimity of view in terms of collaborating on the common challenges of <coughs> Islamophobia. Climate change is something which is... Hmm. Energy uh, security, recently, food security. Energy security, food security is also something climate which is very change. important. Because of climate change, of course. And we are partners with... Uh, Pakistan was uh, leading the G77 plus China in the COP27 and in COP28. We will be further uh, enhancing our efforts in terms of mitigation efforts in terms of sustainable uh, eco farming in terms of population control in terms of many things so you know south asia is, uh, is a place where we have huge population and it's uh, sort of an unchecked growth for last many years so that is something uh, we can also work together in terms of finding because we both are muslim countries and we always have this thing on birth control that is something which needs to be uh, taken in a very sensitive matter. So that is an area where, in my opinion, I think apart from uh, climate change, apart from food security, we also need to focus on uh, how to have uh, uh, the population control in a very effective way, which does not hurt the, the religious feelings as well. So other than that, I guess uh, uh, Malaysia and Pakistan should collaborate more in science and technology. Health is something which is also very important. We've just seen COVID-19 for the last three or four years. So if there is a health collaboration between Muslim countries, and particularly uh, uh, Malaysia has further better expertise in this field, tourism is something which Pakistan could learn from Malaysia. Malaysia being in, in a South Asian country, being a Muslim country, still attract one of the most uh, larger number of tourists uh, uh, in Malaysia. So if Pakistan could gain some sort of understanding expertise from Malaysia and replicate that in uh, Pakistan, that is something which we will benefit a lot as well. Uh, right. Thank that, you very much. Mechanized, right. Uh, mechanized, efficient and sustainable farming is an area where we could learn from our East Asian neighbors. And that is also going to help Pakistan in our food security. Right. There is a lot of potential uh, for enhancing these relations. Thank you very much, Mr. Humayun Khan, expert international affairs, for joining in today's program. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Hassan Javed, economist and senior analyst, for joining in today's program. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Fazlur Rahman, director, Pakistan Institute of China Studies, Sargodha University, for joining in today's program. Uh, thank you for uh, joining us, Dr. Zafar Nawaz Jaspal, expert international affairs, for joining in today's program. Uh, in today's program, uh, we discussed the entire spectrum of Pakistan relations with Malaysia and the contours of these relations. Uh, we see that Pakistan and Malaysia both are developing countries and there is a convergence uh, of uh, views uh, of both countries on a lot of issues and there is a lot of potential when we talk about enhancing and strengthening uh, the economic ties between the two countries and we need to tap in the potential uh, for broader regional prosperity. That's all from Game Changer tonight. Take care. Allah Hafiz.